Hi everyone and welcome back to Ben Builds. In today's fun, exciting, and very electrifying project, I'm going to be showing you how you can create your very own Altoids Tin Stun Device. With this device right here, you will be able to trick your friends into opening it and they will receive a very painful shock, like this. For this project, you're going to need some aluminum tape, two AA batteries, a switch, this switch right here has normally open and normally closed contacts, as you can see when I actuate it, it switches like that. You're going to need a reed relay or a reed switch. You're going to need a couple magnets. You're going to need a AA battery holder that fits inside the Altoids tin. You're going to need a small section of copper wire. You're going to need the Altoids tin itself. And most importantly, you're going to need this. And this is the stun gun module. This takes the DC voltage, the low DC voltage, like three to six volts, and steps it up to 400,000 volts DC. So a link to this eBay listing is going to be in the description for all of you to find. Now that we know all of the parts that we're going to need, we can go ahead and start assembling them inside the Altoids tin and begin creating the Altoids tin surprise zapper. All right, so the first thing we need to do is prepare our Altoids tin. So I guess I'm going to make using Altoids tin sort of my thing and I'm going to try and incorporate it in as many projects as possible in the future. So here's our Altoids tin and I'm going to go ahead and paint it black just so that I can start to build up a layer of insulation between the outside of the tin and the metal um, on the inside. So I'm not going to spare you the boredom of watching me paint it and here we go. We've got a painted Altoids tin. We have this magnetic reed switch, and basically this magnetic reed switch opens and closes in the presence of a magnet. The magnet would sit normally in place holding the magnetic reed switch closed and allowing the circuit to operate if the lid is opened. And if you want to deactivate the device, you take another stack of magnets, place it on the outside of the case, and push the magnet over. That would open the magnetic reed switch and prevent current from flowing when the case is opened. All right, so I just put a little bit of CA glue, which is cyanoacrylate, also known as super glue, um, on the copper wire, and I'm going to let it dry in place. All right, now that this copper wire is glued in place, um, there's now a guide rail for this magnet, so it can only slide up and down the side of the case. Um, so the next step is to super glue in place um, the sensor right here, this reed relay. Next up, you're going to want to take your switch and configure it in normally open mode. As you can see, inside the switch there are three contacts. One center one and two side ones, and each one of the contacts has a little tab on the outside that you can solder to. So what we want is when the box is closed and the switch is depressed, we want the circuit to be broken. So the box opens and the switch closes. So if you can see that little piece of wire right there in the middle, when the switch is down, it's up, and when the switch is up, it's down. So we're going to move the black wire to the bottom, and that will configure the switch in normally open mode. We're going to install it in the box. Over here on the right wall of the Altoids tin, you're going to want it pressed up against the wall, like so, so the lever is still actuatable, like so. The next things we're going to want to install are the battery compartment, as well as the stun module. Now the stun module is going to be faced to the low voltage side. The two inputs, the green and the red, are in on the left, and the outputs are on the right. And the battery case is going to be faced so the two outputs are facing the left. And so the case opens, switch closes, the system is not deactivated, so this is basically a dead short. Power flows from the batteries through the reed relay, through the switch, and into the stun gun, and the stun gun outputs will be connected to the front and the back, like so, so as not to zap people through the heart, but instead through the fingers when they grab it to open the case. We need to poke some holes in the cases. Basically, when this high voltage generator sits in like so, we're going to want one of the wires to run out the back like this, 
and the other wire to run out the front like this. So in order to facilitate that, we're going to need to poke some holes. Place the nail like so, and there it is. Now go ahead and repeat the process on the front. Okay, before we place this stun module inside the Altoids tin, um, we're going to need to run the wires through the holes and insulate the outer edge. What we don't want happening is we don't want the wire uh, arcing through the paint into the case and then going around the case to the other wire. We want it going through the person's hand. Um, and so we are going to wrap this outside rim right here um, with some electrical tape. Cut the electrical tape off. Now here on the bottom, you're going to have some uh, electrical tape hanging over. What I'm going to do is just use some scissors and trim it up. All right, so now that we've trimmed up the electrical tape here on the bottom, we're going to need to poke the holes again. Using the nail, poke through to the inside. Take the left lead of the stun module, twist the wires together so they go through the hole more easily, and then we're going to poke it through the hole in the back of the case. Pull them through. All right, now we're going to turn over the stun module and line it with some hot glue. A copious amount should do. And turn it over and quickly push it into place, like so. We're going to take the battery module and apply some hot glue. Turn it around and press it into place, like so. We have a rat's nest of wires that needs to be taken care of. So at this point, it is definitely required to take a look at the schematic, which is going to be posted in the description. Go read it, study it. You don't want to connect things up wrong because you don't accidentally want high voltage going back into your low voltage side and royally screwing up your thing. Okay, so the first step of the wiring is you're going to take the red lead of the battery connector and you're going to strip it and put a piece of heat shrink tubing over top of it like so. Next, you're going to want to find one of the leads of the switch over here and we're going to solder it together and put the heat shrink tubing over top of it. All right, once the solder's done, pull the heat shrink tubing over the wires and use your lighter to shrink it down. Okay, the next step is to take one of the leads of the reed relay and strip it and put a piece of heat shrink tubing over top of it. You're going to want to connect that to the other connection of the switch. Just solder it up and put the heat shrink tubing on. All right, next you're going to want to take the remaining lead from the reed relay and connect it to the positive end of the high voltage generator. Solder that up and put a heat piece of heat shrink tubing over top. All right, when you're done with that step, that will leave two dangling wires left. I bet you can guess where they go. The negative of the battery connects directly to the green wire of the high voltage generator. So again, cut, strip, solder, heat shrink tubing. Next up, you're gonna to wanna to take some aluminum foil tape, cut yourself a long piece, and cut the width to size so that it will be able to stick down um, on this edge of the Altoids tin. Next up, you're going to want to cut and strip the high voltage wires and lay down the bare exposed wire on top of your strip of aluminum. All right, then go ahead and fan out the wires and hold them in place and place another strip of aluminum tape down right over top of them. All right, go ahead and repeat the process on the other side of the container. All right, as you can see now, we have a direct connection from the wire on the left going all the way across to the wire on the right. So the final thing we need to do is right here in the middle, um, carve out a spark gap. So what we're going to do is we're gonna score the aluminum 
and leave about eh, half a centimeter gap and peel that piece out using a box cutter. All right, there we go. So now what this is going to allow us to do is have this side be isolated and this side be isolated. As an optional step, you can elect to give the entire case another coat of black spray paint. Um, that's what I'm gonna do to make it look a little bit nicer and also to hide these silver strips right here. And now the final step is one coat of lacquer. Just gonna use some crystal clear enamel that says it'll work on metal and plastic. The last step that I would recommend is adding a danger high voltage sticker. Um, if they know ahead of time that there's high voltage on here and they decide to open the case while grabbing it anyway, it's sort of more their fault than it is yours. So I'm gonna take some CA glue and put a drop on each corner. What we wanna do is not just glue the paper down, but also put a layer of clear lacquer over top of the sheet of paper. Um, this is the completed product. This is what it looks like. And if you look here on the edge, at first glance, you really can't even notice that there are any sort of electrical contacts. I mean, you can if you look really closely, but just handing this to someone without the high voltage sticker on it, they would probably open it and get shocked. Definitely be careful, and I'm not responsible if someone gets shocked, hurt, killed, or you get punched in the face for shocking the wrong guy. What it looks like when it's... You can see you've got arcing along the sides of the case and along the back. Thanks for watching Ben Builds. Don't forget, tomorrow a video is coming out of a compilation of people getting shocked with this thing. So if you want to see people wince in pain as they drop this box on the floor repeatedly, definitely don't forget to check that video out. Thanks guys, and bye. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, feel free to click the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos.